What's the most important control mechanism of your motorcycle? Some would say it's the handlebars or the throttle. I'm going to argue it's the brakes. A rider that makes effective use of their brakes is a rider that's in control. Today on MC Garage, Red Bull Street Freestyle rider Aaron Colton is taking over MC Garage to show you how he uses, maintains, and modifies the brakes on his freestyle motorcycle. The task of brake bleeding can be needed in many different scenarios. A maintenance fluid flush, installing new braking components, or simply lackluster lever feel that needs improvement. As there are many different videos out there about how to bleed brakes, I wanted to share with you some of my secrets in mastering the brake bleeding process. In theory, brake bleeding is a very simple task. You take the fluid in the bottle and flush the air out of the braking components by creating suction at the lowest point in the system. But with most tasks, it is much easier said than done. I'm going to go over a few scenarios where little brake bleeding secrets will make this job a clean and easy breeze. First, I'm going to start with a simple fluid flush. This is when the system has already bled and just needs fresh fluid. If done right, you can do all without spilling a drop and be wrapped up in a few minutes. In this video, I'm going to use both vacuum and manual techniques to show you how both are accomplished. But these tips are key to making this process a one-person job. So prep is everything when entering any brake bleeding project, and as small as these may seem, it really makes a big difference in the outcome and the experiences that I've had bleeding brakes. This right here turns a two-person job into a one-person job. You simply drill a hole in a spare reservoir cap that you have and put a syringe up top so that when you're bleeding down below, either pump style or with a vacuum bleeder, you can simply screw this into the reservoir and you have a big tank to work off of. If you have a flat mount style reservoir cap, you can take a hard piece of plastic, trace a circle around this, drill three holes, same solution. This right here is your bleeder nipple that you'll have in your calipers. And basically, a misconception is when you put the bleeder on there and you're seeing a lot of air come through the bleeder hose instead of brake fluid, a lot of times you think you're chasing the bubbles out of the system. Oftentimes, that's just air coming in around the threads. So, what you do is you can put a couple wraps of Teflon tape around the threads on the bleeder nipple. And what this does is gives a tighter seal so that the fluid and the air that's coming out is actually specifically from the nipple end. Now, mess is a big thing. It sucks on your hands. It really ruins paint. And one thing you can do is a couple simple things of preparation. You can take a microfiber or blue cloth just cut a little triangle out of it. And simple as that, you basically have a little cloth cover that you can do your bleeding through. Now, there might be situations when you're not gonna be able to make an extra size of reservoir cup. So you can get a dispensing bottle like this, or a little trick that I learned in the race paddock a number of years ago. You take a cap of the top of your brake fluid, you take a valve stem that you've removed the core from, you drill a hole through the top of the cap, and what that does is gives you a nice, easy, drip-free, 90-degree spout to refill your brake fluid reservoir. So there's no better feeling than getting brake fluid on your hands. That's why I glove up. It's easy enough, makes this job a lot more enjoyable. And I'm gonna do just a standard flush on the front brake lines. It's almost cheating when you have one of these pneumatic brake bleeders. It makes the job just seconds and uh, always makes it much more enjoyable. But what I'm gonna do is set up my extended reservoir cap with my cloth that I cut and fill this thing up so I have a nice big reservoir to work with. From that point, this is where it turns into a cakewalk. Always make sure you have enough throw when you're setting up where you're gonna have your bleeder be. And this is where it becomes a breeze. Turn on the bleeder, put it on the cap, and boom. Watch the level go down, pump the lever a few times. And that big reservoir is just making all the difference because I'm watching it change color, come through here. And this particular brake fluid is golden brown. And it's flushed through. 
All right, simple as that. You move to the other side and do the same thing in reverse. You set up your box wrench on the nipple with enough throw to open the valve completely. Start the bleeder. Open it up. And watch the level fall. And now this time, I'll watch it fall, go back into the reservoir, and when it's at the right level, I'll stop and be totally blank. So now, just like that, like a rock, exactly the consistency of braking feel I like to have in these Magura radial setup. No mess, take this right off over the top. That right there is perfectly bled. If you wanna do a little extra credit and your master cylinder has a bleeder up top, one thing you can do, and it's a tricky little spot that air finds itself, you can just put slight pressure on the lever, give it a little crack, oop, just like that, little bubble of air came out, and that last 2% of braking feel has come into play. So some of you might already know about the zip tie trick, but to chase the last few bubbles at the end, it really helps to toss a zip tie on for a couple hours to compress the fluid and the air let it rise to the top and give it a little clip a few hours later to chase the last few gremlin bubbles out of the system. And sometimes it takes something as simple as a 3 8 inch fuel line to take care of your routing brake line needs. You run the zip tie through the fuel line, around the brake hose, back through the fuel line, setting yourself up like that. And then when you run it around the fork, it offsets quite nicely. And just like that, you have offset brake mount. So I don't always have access to an air compressor or brake bleeder, but there's always the old fashioned way. It does the same job, just requires a little bit more time. I just set up a brand new brake line here for the foot brake, torque down the banjo bolts, and I'm not gonna do any wizardry for the fluid reservoir on this. I'm just gonna go old fashioned from top to bottom. And this really is a repeating cycle. I'm creating my vacuum by cracking the bleeder, creating negative space in the master cylinder, closing the bleeder and releasing over and over and over again. So with replacing the rear brake line, always make sure that you torque down the banjo bolts. What this does is compresses the crush washer, and believe it or not, I've had leaks from those areas before, so torquing should not be overlooked. So starting from the top in a completely empty system, what you do is fill the reservoir as much as you can, and you'll notice plenty of bubbles coming up from the initial tube that feeds to the reservoir. And although, this traditional style of bleeding is slow going, it's tried and true, and it works just as good. So from this point, rule of thumb, if the lever is down and the master's open, the caliper's open. If you're gonna release, you need to have the caliper closed and release. Push, bleed, close, release. Push, bleed, close, release. Over and over and over again. And believe it or not, sometimes you get pretty lucky and you'll get a good run of a vacuum created inside the system. And in this case right here, I'm actually starting to get a bleed and fluid's always a good sign. Now the caliper pistons are actuating. Push, open, close, release. Pump, push, open, close, release. Pump, push, open, close, release. And basically, what we have right there is that's about 85% bled. So I'm gonna keep going for just a little bit more until everything I see out of here on my tightly Teflon tape sealed nipple is reading just fluid, and I'm about done doing a manual bleed job on the foot brake setup. So there you have it, the Garage 93 brake bleeding secrets. Hopefully some of these will make your bleeding experience more enjoyable. Everyone has their own way to go about this job. And if you do or have a tip you'd like to add, drop it in the comment section below. And the ever expanding knowledge of trying to execute that job perfectly, I'd love to hear some more opinions on how you get that job done. 
But until then, thank you guys for joining, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of MC Garage.